Okay. Hello. Is this working? Oh. Alright. Camera is hating on me right now. Shit. Hello. Hi, Laura. This is Erica. It's the 5th of July, and I wanted to uh, show you my bike. Uh, I forgot a couple of things inside, so I'll have to make this video in two parts, but here's the first part. So, here, I wonder if it'll let me, it won't. So, so here is the bike. I got it used for like $100, I think originally it was 200 and the front tire, or the front wheel, is what came with it. You can see it's, uh, it's black, and I guess there's only been one spoke that's popped on this tire. I don't know if you can see that right here. So I recently got that replaced. And mine came with those reflectors on the wheels. And I think when I got this new wheel a couple years ago uh, from the bike shop, they put my old reflector on. Anyway, that was a new wheel, and that wheel cost, I don't know, 150 or something like that. And my tires are probably pretty similar to your tires. Uh, hybrid, cross between a road bike, which is a little narrower, and a mountain bike, which is a little bigger. And the mountain bikes usually have like more tread there. And I don't know how many speeds are here. I think these are kind of like the big steps, one, two, three. And then these are the smaller steps over here. And while I'm riding, I've kind of figured out which ones I like best. And then I usually just alternate between three of these here. Um, the important thing to remember is when you change those, you gotta be pedaling. You probably know that already though. And then here's the um, rack that I just got put on here a few weeks ago. I had another one, but the, the screws or whatever like loosened up over time. So one thing I wanna try to do now that I have this new rack on here is to try to tighten up the screws more often. Notice that they have the, the hex key, um, whatever that is. So I have a hex key set so I can use that to tighten it, but it's not the normal screwdriver set. Um, and when, actually when it, when it was halfway busted, I used to have to carry it with me all the time because I would have to like tighten it up every time I, every single time I rode it. And the thing that got broke on my bike when I put it in and out of the car was the front brake right here, which is new. I don't know if you can tell, but it looks a lot newer than the rest of the bike. Um, that's one of the things that I got fixed when I put the, the rack up uh, on. So I just got new front brakes for that. And just coming in and out of the car, that's what fucks that thing up. But, you know, the back brakes are the thing that's more important anyway. All right, and then here's my seat. It's just the one that came with the bike. I like it. It works out okay. Um, one thing that I might think about in the future, since this one, I don't know if you can tell, is kind of coming apart. Um, something that I think about doing is getting a new one. I don't really like the big wide ones. I, I don't think it really makes a big difference, actually, because... You, no matter how big your butt is, like, your bone is the thing that's important, so anything else can just hang off, but you gotta find whatever is comfortable for you. I know when I first started riding a few years ago, or riding a little bit more frequently, um, my butt got really sore, but I think it was more like my leg muscles, um, were making me put more pressure on my butt than I needed to, I don't know. Alright, and then here's the milk crate that I was talking about, um, I actually put it on a little wrong so I need to take it off but notice here's the reflector things that I was talking about I accidentally put the I didn't wasn't careful about how I put it on there so I've got one side that's empty that should be the side facing my butt um, but you can tell that if it was on correctly that would make a big difference for being visible to cars and like I said on the phone these things right here were just like some sticky stuff that I got and I used, the, I think, the whole pack, whatever came on the pack. Um, and it was just like a single sheet of paper that cost maybe $7, I want to say. And I bought it from the bike store. Uh, and I haven't really seen it anywhere else except at that bike store. Um, but I just got the full sheet and took all the big pieces and put it on the milk crate and put some of the small pieces 
on the side and the front. Um, but I can see how this one's like peeling a little bit because it's, uh, it's uh, this one's peeling a little bit because it's a rounded edge there. But I mean, it's been on there for two years and um, it's not like I've been riding a whole, whole lot, but you know, a bit. Um, what else do I want to say? Mine is a, is a quick release. I don't know if you can tell that lever right here. It's a quick release uh, wheel. I think they do that so that you can um, put it in your car more easily or lock it up more securely. By I don't know if you've seen some people take the the front wheel off and then connect it to the back wheel when they lock it up just to be super safe. But I've never done that. And again, that's the cheaper wheel, uh, the one that just came with it. So if someone stole it, I wouldn't be heartbroken about it. Um, the back is also quick release. It's got that lever on it, but it's a little bit more difficult for people to get it off because of all of the gears and stuff. So um, I have a U-lock. I think you said you are familiar with them. That's my U-lock right there. And I usually use it to lock up the, the back tire and the, the back tire and the Here's the pole usually, like right here, and then I stick I stick the U-lock here and here to tie up the the bike and the um, the bike and the tire to a pole. My bike wants to tip over now that my bag isn't in it, but let me show you how I have it have this milk crate attached um, just with some kind of big zip ties. I think I have eight of them and that works pretty good for me. I noticed though that uh, you might want to carry some with you because as you use them they can get brittle and break off. They're, you know, they're not all going to break at the same time but just kind of keeping an eye on that over the course of time so that you can replace it when it needs to be replaced. Uh, notice too that, that I've balance my or place my milk crate kind of far away from my butt because I want to have lots of room so that it's not you know touching me or whatever and I, it could probably be closer but I just wanted to be on the safe side so that's where I place mine and you can see it's not it's not uh, right here is where the end of the rack is and I left that much space but you could probably leave less or just try it out and see what you like um, and one of the big reasons why I like the milk crate is because I hate carrying my U-lock. I know you said you got a smaller lock, so that's probably a lot better for you, but I hate carrying it, and I couldn't figure out where else to put it on the bike when, when I didn't have the, the, what's it called? When I didn't have the crate because I didn't have the rack, I used to just balance it right here, and it was kind of a pain in the ass. And I found, you said that you put a, a bike rack, or... Uh, basket on your on the front of your bike and I found that that impeded my steering but you probably have had one before so you're probably aware of how that works um, but one of the other bikes that I had I used to have a, uh, a basket in the front and that is kind of convenient because whatever it is you can reach it more easily and I find that I want to get at my phone sometimes like right before or right after I um, am riding and or maybe I hear it beep and I want to check it so I pull over and it's a real pain in the ass to get the to reach back here and try to get it without like getting off the bike um you said you have a walkthrough bike and I found that I would prefer that actually this is kind of like a, a non-gendered one that just by chance actually so that kind of worked out but it's when I have to get on it I usually have to like tilt it like this to, to step over it it's kind of undignified <laughs> I suppose another important thing that you'll probably remember since the last time that you had a bike um, but maybe not since you didn't commute that much you just used it for recreation but um, you you want to cover up the seat unless it's waterproof but most bike seats aren't, you're going to want to remember to have some sort of bag either in one of your bags or attached to your crate so that 
if it if you know it's going to rain you'll definitely cover or you just get in the habit of covering up your seat every time and i find these little grocery bags this is a target bag i find the little grocery bags like really convenient because you can tie them um down here or i actually like will i'll wrap the whole bag over and then um tie it right here or i'll even like tie it over the top so like the knot is here but it's coming from up here I don't know if that makes sense uh, and then it won't blow off with the wind so that's what I found to be pretty convenient um, you might consider since yours is kind of an expensive bike um, getting some sort of tagging system or serial number or something there might be a serial number on your bike already and just keeping a record of that in case it gets stolen uh, I have a uh, like my school, Loyola had some sort of program, I don't know if you can see that right there, so that they put uh, something on your bike. So if it gets stolen, it can be more easily returned. And then I've registered with Loyola's system so that if it got found, they could find me and give it back. But if you did get it stolen, you could at least file a police report and it wouldn't just be, you know, a picture of what it was, but an actual serial number or something like that too help you get it back. Man, this video is turning into a really long one. Sorry. Um, all right. I think that's all I wanted to say. Oh, right here, this thing right here is the attachment for my front light. I'm going to show you that when I get inside, but it's just something that kind of like hooks over it. And then this is the little, I don't know if you can see that very well. This is the release button. So, um, you know, the whole light just kind of slides on here is fastened pretty clearly there's a button on top that you can change the settings and then when you want to take it off you release it because you can't in chicago no you can't leave your lights on your bikes because people will just take them off uh so you can leave the the mount but you can't leave anything detachable itself and i would never leave my bike unlocked and even sometimes people are assholes they'll treat my Sorry, uh, my camera ran out of uh, space because I started rambling on forever and had a really, really, really long ass video. So, um, I was just trying to say that people have been assholes before and they've used the, my basket as a trash can, so I never leave anything in it. But people are probably a lot nicer where you live and probably wouldn't do anything like that. Um, so I just wanted to, to show you the rest of what it is that I carry around with me with my bike, so let me show you. So here are my lights. This is the the light that I told you about that's very, that it hooks onto that um, mount that I showed you, so you just kind of like slide it on right na there and it points out, and then it um, does that, or it has more of a steady flash. But it's really nice if you are going to be driving at night. I mean, you can get away with not having them, um, definitely and I think probably where you live it would be fairly fine but um, where I live and especially since I'm biking through traffic I feel like um, having a light's really important um, but if you ever go anywhere where they don't have uh, street lights or not many street lights having a bright setting like this and then that you can angle down to where you're going can just help you make sure that you avoid any potholes or whatever and then here's the backlight. I think the backlight, if you're going to get a light, it's the most important thing to have. So remember how I have the the milk crate? Okay, so here's the the light. And this is, my sister got this for me. It's super cheap. I, I think you can get it at Target for like $10 or less. I'm not really sure. But, um, and the batteries last pretty a long time. Anyway, I just have a hairband attached to it. So see how it kind of like is a clip or whatever? Now, when I have... When I didn't have my ba um, basket on the back, I would just clip this on the bottom of my backpack because there's a little space for it. But um, now that I have my basket back, I prefer this method. So again, since I can't leave the... the What am I trying to say? Since I can't leave my lights on overnight or any time that I'm not with a, my bike, I have to take them off. So I have this band on it, and then it, when I have to, you know, say like the little handle... That is, there's a little handle on the milk crate. I'm sorry, I can't do this very well with two hands. So I just kind of, you see this, take the, the loop around the back and put it over the top like that. And then that kind of stays secure and it's fine. Um, and then the light on the side. 
you know, this is solid, and then that's the one that I usually use when I'm biking. And then I think there's a few other settings, but I do the the one that's quickly flashing. That's the one that I use. So those are the two lights that I have. And again, if if you just don't need any, that's fine. But I would suggest at least getting the the backlight just for safety reasons, make you feel more secure. But if you can and you're willing, get a second one too. This is. This is one I, I think I saw the same one at the bike store. I don't remember. I did a lot of research at the time because I over research products that I buy on a regular basis and I got this one. But this one my sister just gave me and I think anyone's probably fine. And then here's the um, more heavy duty. I, I know you can get several different kinds of zip ties, but I get the more heavy duty one. And if you wanted to clip them so you didn't have those edges on the bottom, that would be cool. Uh, something I forgot to mention. Um, when I was showing you my bike is that if it rains or if there's any kind of moisture on the road you want to have something in the bottom of your basket so that your stuff doesn't get wet or so that your butt doesn't get wet so I ha always travel with two trash bags that are just wadded up in the or folded up rather in the bottom of my backpack um, and I just put that under my bag or if it's raining really hard I put my whole backpack in it um, so that it doesn't get wet. So that's something to think about if you plan on commuting all the time is what to do with your stuff should it ring. And then I told you I had a, a hex key set. This is one of the... It's actually made for bikes and I used to use it quite a lot when I had a bike that was falling apart more and I'd always have to tighten it but and it has just the regular screwdriver sets too. Um, but I haven't used it that much, especially since I got that new rack put on. Um, and that's usually what I carry around, and I showed that thing to you before, too. Um, really, like, there's very little danger of your pant legs getting caught, but your pant legs will get dirty. So that kind of helps protect them a little bit. And then here's the, the cheapo helmet that I have. So, so that is it. I apologize that this video is so long, but as you can see, I kind of, like, am excited about bikes, so feel free to make me your own video if you ever feel like it, or you can just tell me about it next time I talk to you, so, um, yeah, that's it. Hi, and goodbye.